Welcome to the best way to kill BC performance with a single line of code. Hey, I'm Eric, and a pattern that I have seen too many times. Uh, not by myself, but you know, somebody else's code uh, is a pattern that is truly, truly bad for performance. Um, but when you fall into the trap of the pattern, you might not see it before it's too late. Um, so let me show you what I'm talking about. Um, here is Visual Studio Code. And um, the pattern that I'm talking about is, is very simple. Let me explain the pattern first, that we extend something um, with a trigger. And the trigger we want to extend is the on after get record. So when we have a list, this is this is very let's um, let's let's run this app. This this is a great app. So let's let's run it right now. There's no no trap. There's no box here. Um, so let's talk about the on after get record for a second. So, oh, and that opened up on a different screen. I guess we can fix that maybe we can't you know what let me actually fix that by firing up a browser again here oh, sorry about that um there we go so on after get record well if we have a list and let's use the custom list as an example I don't want to take any tours. Then, you know, after data has been retrieved from the database, in hopefully the most optimal way, we get a chance to, you know, touch the record before it's presented to the screen. Um, and the pattern I have seen say, okay, when we get something, we, we need to update something. So so something like this happened. Let me let me show you an example. We could say that um, we want to update the credit limit. So let's say that we are we using some very intricate code that will update the credit limit, right? And then and here here is the single line of code. Then we modify the record. So and, and and then we run it. And we log in because we were already logged in, I guess. Um, and then everything was fine. Ah, this is performance is is great here. Uh, and I go in and I get a credit limit and on, on every customer and, you know, hooray, job done, hit the pub. Well, in non-COVID times, I guess. Um, and, and when I look at this, this looks perfect. But what is actually happening is that when the list is retrieved, uh, that is done in a in this case because the page is not editable. So so it it is done in a fine set sort of way uh, to be as fast as possible. Um, so suddenly we are creating write transactions for every record, but we are kind of doing it triggered by UI. Uh, meaning that then we get some more records and we get some more writes. So as soon as multiple users start doing this, just scrolling up and down, you will have deadlocks, you will have uh, cascading locks and so on. Um, but the problem here is that right now that I'm just sitting here my, myself and, and I'm this is working perfectly. I'm getting... I'm getting my uh, credit limits updated all the time. And, and it's usually I go up and down and then I get a new credit limit and I go up and down. 
back to this one. So it's getting calculated. It works exactly how I intended it to work. The problem is that my design is going to kill performance. Um, and you won't see it right away. You'll see it as soon as there's users on this. Uh, and the bigger the table is, the uh, the harder they hit, the, the, the whatever they fall. I don't know what the saying is. Um, so what you want to do is not this. So, but what is the solution? What is it? What if you need to update something? Um, two cases. One is that you just want the information that you gather, you're gathering to, to actually be displayed on screen. So, so let's say that we go to the layout here and we do a add after. Let's let's go with uh, um, no. Well, how about add before balance, and then we create a new field called our credit, um, and we call our very intricate function to calculate the credit. Um, captions, a credit limit, is now equal all, uh, let's actually just keep this in here for, as a warning. So now I have created a field on the list that is just calculating the value every time Business Central has a need to display this field. Um, and we can see we get a beautiful credit limit here in integers. That's how it's supposed to be. Uh, and, and we can see that this is, I'm scrolling up and scrolling down. At some point we get, we can probably force it to get out of the, the cache and actually do an on after get again. Um, so, so that's that's a great way to just calculate something. You can you can also go and and in on after get record populate a global variable and put that and have that part of the data set and all that good stuff. All these methods are just calculating on the fly, not saving it to the table. You don't need to save it to the table. So so let me show you that way. So if if we create a um, we take this guy, and we'll get it back, and we create a, a global variable called credit limit a decimal. And then we, on after get record, we update that. And we go here and say credit limit. So on, on after get record, we will calculate, but this is a global variable, so it will just stay in memory for the next record. So if I uh, let me kill the oops, kill the debugger. Come on. Kill the debugger. And now we get something else here. Uh, so it, it works the same way as calling the function, but but in, in some cases it's people prefer to to do this and and have that column being part of the data set if you want to. So you can go and say in data set to this guy. Um, but what if you need to update? Then you need to find somewhere else to update. So so UI can never be the trigger here uh, because you will end up in, you know, let's say that we have a target record and somebody is scrolling down to that record, somebody is scrolling up to that record, and you you can you can very easily create the perfect storm of a uh, uh, of a deadlock. You can create uh, extended locks so. Suddenly, both of the users want to lock too much, and and 
everything comes to a halt. So let me switch back to this guy. Don't do modifiers on rec. Don't 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 do write operations from on after get record. On after get records purpose is to prepare data to be displayed. In reality, what we're sometimes missing is uh, whether you know that we have um, read-only triggers, so that we cannot. So, so AL does not have the concept of you know begin transaction commit. We have a commitment. We don't have a concept of begin transaction. Uh, so that is kind of handled behind the scene whenever you are doing the when. Either that the system is doing something to initialize a new transaction or you're doing something. But we don't have a, an explicit begin transaction way. Um, so with that in mind, we don't have code that is easily defined as being outside transactions. Um, but you should consider on after get record and Similar. That's not the only trigger that works. The way to, to make sure the UI is is working. Um, those should be considered read-only triggers uh, for optimal performance. Yeah. Anyway, that's it. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you have ever put a modify in a trigger like that. If you are okay telling me that. Um, It'll be between us and all the other viewers if you write it in the comments. Anyway, have a lovely day. I will see you soon in the next video. Take care. Bye.